Hi everyone, in this problem we're given three functions, x, x minus 1, and x plus 7. And we're being asked if the functions are linearly dependent or linearly independent on the set of real numbers, so negative infinity to infinity. Furthermore, we're being asked to use the definition. So what definition? Well, the definition of dependence. So the definition of dependence says that if you have um, a linear combination of these functions and it's equal to zero and not all of the coefficients are zero, then the answer is dependent. So let me go ahead and write that down here briefly. So whenever we have a linear combination, if all the coefficients are zero, this is the part you want to memorize, it's going to be independent. And if they're not all zero, it's going to be dependent. So let's go ahead and go through the problem, and we'll refer to this again uh, at the end. But this is the key thing to, to know. So we'll start by assuming that we have a linear combination of these functions. So what does that mean? So we have, suppose that we have a number, which we'll call c1 times x, plus another number, which we'll call c2 times x minus 1, plus another number, c3 times x plus 7. So this is called a linear combination of the functions. right? It's a number times a function plus the number times a function plus a number times the function. And suppose this is equal to 0 for some c1, c2, c3, and for every x, so and for all x, in this interval here, negative infinity to infinity. So this is a linear combination. So we've started by assuming we have a linear combination equal to zero. So if now we find out that all of these are zero, then the answer is independent. And if they're not all zero, then it's dependent. So the next thing you do in this problem is basically you distribute the c's. So then, well, nothing can be done with the c1 and the x, so we keep that. Looks like we can distribute the c2 here, so we'll get uh, c2x, and then distribute it here, we'll get minus c2. Then here we get c3x, and then plus 7c3, and this is equal to 0. The next step is always pretty much the same. You want to group everything together, so group your constant terms and group your x terms. So let me use a different color here so we can see what's going on. So this is an x term, this is an x term, this is an x term. So we're going to pull out an x and write this as c1 plus, oh, this is cool, plus c2 plus c3, x. And then let's group the constants together. Oh, I see, said the blind man. So something interesting happens in this problem. I'm really glad. I'm making this video. I almost didn't make it, but this one's a little bit different than the other problems, so something will happen here in a moment. I'm going to put this in parentheses because this is the constant term. So once you get here, um, you basically set each piece equal to zero. Realize that this is really zero plus zero x. So you're just using matching. This piece here must be equal to the zero in front of the x. This piece here must be equal to the zero here. Just, just matching. So setting the first piece equal to 0, so c1 plus c2 plus c3 equals 0. And then here's the, here's the key. This whole thing is equal to 0 because it's the constant term, right? This thing here matches this. So the whole thing is 0. Now what we can do, I suppose, uh, is maybe um, work with this one here. So we have 7c3 equal to c2. Okay, So I think now we can just pick some numbers. So like if you pick c3 equals 1, okay, well what's going to happen there, that'll mean that 7 times 1 is equal to c2. So c2 is equal to 7. And then if you come over here, we'll get c1 plus c2, which is 7, plus c3, which is 1, and that's equal to 0. So c1 plus 8 
is equal to zero. So that means that C1 is equal to negative eight. Boom. We have C's and they are not all zero. You might say, where did I get the one from? I just made it up. Basically, if you can pick numbers, pick them. Just don't pick zero. And then the answer is dependent. It's only going to be independent when you can't do this. Like you, you get to this step and, and there's nothing you can do. Like they're all zero. So for example, say you get to that step and you have something like, oh, C1 plus C2 equals zero. C2 equals zero. C1 plus C3 equals zero. So you get something like this. You say, okay, C2 is zero. Ooh, I see. You put it in here and you get C1 equals zero. Oh, I see. You put it in here <laughs> and you get C3 equals zero. In this case, the answer would be independent. So you have no choice. So whenever it's independent, it's forced on you. Like you have no choice. It's just independent and there's nothing you can do about it. Whenever it's dependent, that's when you can pick numbers, okay? So if you're allowed to pick numbers, pick numbers. Don't pick zero, right? If you would have picked zero, you would, it wouldn't have worked. It would have been really bad. So when you're allowed to pick numbers, pick numbers that aren't zero. The reason is, in the definition, it says, if there exists constants, not all zero, such that this is true, then the functions are dependent. So if you can find them, it's dependent. So you try to find them. And if you find them, like we did in this example, it's dependent. If you can't find them, then that means it's going to be forced upon you and it'll be independent. So uh, I hope that made sense. I uh, kind of went on a, a little rant there about it, but it's super key. And this is a really important definition. This is, this is linear algebra, but it's linear algebra with functions. So even if you haven't had linear algebra and you're watching this video, it's like you're doing a little bit more advanced uh, linear algebra, which makes it kind of fun. When you typically see this in a linear algebra course, by the way, you, you see it with vectors. So here we're doing it with functions, so it's a little bit, a little bit more hardcore. Good luck.